The 6.5 is on the road at AMD's advancing AI event, and it, there have been some huge announcements all the way from the data center uh, to the client computing and everything in between. Dan, it's great to see you. Yeah, it's great to be here. Today was a high energy day. Uh, right off first five minutes, uh, you know, Lisa Sue, CEO of AMD, on stage, and, and she was moving. She and was. Covered a lot of ground, but this isn't just about today, Pat. This is a day that the market's been waiting for, a lot of people out there have been waiting for. In the AI and silicon space, um, this may be one of the biggest days of 2023. Yeah, and it, it's incredible on a, on a lot of things. And, and if nothing else was reinforced, it was the need for openness, right? Uh, open models, uh, foundational models, uh, open software, open networking lanes that I know you and I have talked about networking a lot as, as that missing piece that not enough people uh, we're talking about, but we got it all today. And I'm really pleased to introduce uh, Forrest Narod, who runs uh, the data center business at AMD. Forrest, great to see you. Great to see you, Pat. Good to see you, Dan. Yeah, yeah it's good to have you here. Um, you must be smiling ear to ear, even, even though you might look a little <laughs> stoic. Um, Pat, we've been around enough events to know the amount of tension, the buildup, the excitement. He was also, rocking on also, stage, I gotta tell you, the education that I got too, I, I even, I took a little, you know, some notes and, uh, as an analyst, right, sometimes we don't admit when we take notes, but I was like, dee, 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 particularly oh, yeah. uh, on the opus of networking. So yeah. I appreciate well, that. As a, as a modern young millennial myself, I note things by tweeting, and yes. then I go back and look at them later. And then we do the long form like analysts do, but uh, we did put a lot out there. I'm joking. I know. All right, we're good. <laughs> so um, AI is at this massive inflection, right. and it was sort of a theme of the day. It was the sort of theme of the year, really, since yeah. about November 30th of 2022, but you've been working on it a lot longer than that. Right. And it's at this inflection point, and here you are entering a market, you're sort of being looked at as the rising competition in the data center, um, very compelling numbers, very compelling metrics. How are you viewing this sort of moment in time, and how are the conversations with your customers? Are they feeling confident? Are you feeling confident that you're uh, prepared to compete and that they're really willing to go all in? It seemed that way from today, but kind of interested in kind of how you're seeing that. Yeah, we we definitely think uh, today was uh, just an incredible day. It was it was the culmination from our point of view, not just of what's been going on this last year, but uh, you know, quite candidly, we we introduced the MI three hundred. We've been working on it for over five years. Yeah. You know, the, the people sometimes don't appreciate the complexity of of these chips and what we're trying to do. So the, these multi-generational roadmaps get set in place years in advance. And particularly for the MI300A, which has some really interesting technology, the, the chiplets, the, the, the mix of processes, the, the, the large package, the, on the 300A, the combination of the CPU and GPU together. Yeah. We've been working on it for a long time. And so for us, it was an incredible day to have that culminate in not just a launch, but in really strong customer acceptance. And you know the excitement of our customers uh, that we've got not just the silicon, but all the work that we've done on, on the software as well has, has come together at one point where yeah. the excitement of AI is there. That's the thing we didn't know five years ago. Right. Right, we didn't know, we, we believed that this AI inflection point would happen at some point, but you don't know when. And so when we started this journey, uh, we, we didn't know that the whole world would be revolving around generative AI uh, today, and the whole world would be saying, you know, thank heavens that, that AMD is offering us a, a really solid, complete AI solution, hardware and software, that gives me choice, and then also helps foster innovation and uh, across the industry. Yeah, Forrest, uh, a couple couple thoughts there. So first of all, thanks for reinforcing what I'm trying to reinforce when it comes to silicon, which is, uh, again, software and ID is really hard, but it you don't have to start five years uh, and plan it. Um, but with semiconductors locking in an architecture five years in advance, yeah. Uh, and then, oh my gosh, once you get the silicon even back, uh, you've got another year to get it in, in high volume at least, but then you add the complexity of chiplets and then you layer on the software, it, it really is uh, a big day. So I, I talked a little bit in the run up about uh, a lot of the discussion about openness, okay? Right. And it, it, you know everybody has their definition of, of open. And 
you know, some people might say, well, you know, when it's not open, it goes faster, right? Uh, when you know you look at uh, you know full stacks and and, and so people go in, but can you can you uh, talk about and a little bit of a leading question in that Dan and I are both uh, more competition is better, but can you talk about the value of open in the context of of what you said on stage? Well, I think first off we th we think open is absolutely crucial, and and as a company that's long been the it has the been the of hallmarks of AMD. Yeah, we've yes. always been open. We've always been partnering, and the reason is, you know, that that quite frankly we think that's where the most value and the most innovation flows is from open ecosystems where others can come together, and add value and add new ideas to your your platform. Um, and so we we think you know it's sort of a, a question of to, to my mind open versus completely proprietary and locked down. It's a, it's a, if you're proprietary and locked down, that's a statement that you believe yeah. that your engineers are smarter than everybody the else. Entire is. industry combined. That's right. Yeah. And and we we certainly have never been you know arrogant enough to think that. And and uh, so we think open's critical. Um, and we also hear that in spades from our customers. They want open platforms so that they can add value, so that they can you know, add their own innovations around the ecosystem, uh, and quite also so that they're not locked in to something proprietary that, that yeah. maybe has unfavorable economics, if you right. want to say. Yeah, no, I hear you. And again, AMD Hallmark uh, for a long time. And the reality is sometimes open doesn't go as, as quickly, but it, it absolutely looks at least, you know, by, and in the end, the response from your customers and your partners, uh, it, right. it was really a tour de force uh, today that, that reinforced that. If you look at, uh, I think just yesterday, ahead of your event, uh, AMD's part of this new uh, IBM meta-led mm -hmm. AI alliance, right. um, which is not just tech companies, it's laboratories, institutions, universities, That's right. it's up and down the stack, it's security, it's SaaS companies. Um, and that, that really does come down to the fact that I think people understand the critical nature of getting this right. And That's that right. having too few control too much, it would be like having one or two companies having ended up controlling the entire internet. Now I'm sure someone will argue that that <laughs> did in some way happen, but it really, it's been more and more democratized as time yeah. has gone on. AI is going to be similar. It's going to change the world. It's changing our path. And uh, you know, like I said, Lisa alluded to how much it's changed everything in the past year. Um, something else has changed a lot for us in the past few years. It's been the packaging conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, a little pivot there, right? We, we were real deep, and now yeah, we're going to get back, we're back to AI to packaging. We're going to get back to pack. We, we, we like doing chip guys. We we'll go from being big picture guys to chip guys. Yeah. But you know, packaging in terms of bringing together, putting all your, you know, your memory, you know, compute uh, onto a sing, into a single package, seems to be a trend line in the industry. And right. today it seems to definitely be something that you're leading with. Talk about how that's enabling you to advance, to innovate, to drive next generation designs, and of course to stay competitive for us. You know, people have, have talked for you know most of the last decade about how Moore's Law is under threat and it's slowing down, and the, the, the traditional way that we used to get more capability and more price performance is just rely on the process, right? Just get more transistors. And they've been talking about how that's been slowing down. At AMD, I'd say we looked at it very dispassionately almost a decade ago and said, yeah. yeah, you're right. And so therefore, and that's a step that a lot of people didn't take, therefore we have to do it differently. We have to embrace chiplets. We have to look at how certain types of logic and other functions scale differently as the process, you know, generations continue. And so we're going to want to have chiplets of different processes mixed together in one package in order to deliver, continue to deliver the most performance, price performance, and power efficiency. And so once you accept that you're going to have to do that, packaging becomes the obvious new critical thing that you have to, it was almost an afterthought in totally. years past. But now it's central to how you design these chips, how you design these systems. And so we invested massively. And I'd say, you know, I, I do think we're generally four or five years at least ahead of most of the industry 
in terms of embracing this technology. You see Intel now with Sapphire Rapids is, is, is going to a four die topology very, very similar to what we did in the first generation Epic products back in 2017. And we certainly, you know, they're going to advance it rapidly as well, but they've begun that journey as well. We think everybody doing high performance parts is going to go after advanced packaging, 2D and 3D over time. But we think we're ahead. Yeah, it was, well, first of all, even when I was in the business, I mean, 13 years ago, um, packaging was an afterthought. It was something you threw over the wall uh, that, that, you know, was it organic, you know, PGA, BGA, and that was almost the, the extent of it. But now uh, it, it is kind of equal partners with, uh, right. with chip design. And the big bet, I remember on Ryzen, was because, you know, there was this discussion about, oh, MCM was always slow. Right, because you just couldn't get the interconnect fast enough, and you couldn't have it uh, sucking too much power. Right. right. Uh, so hats off to you. I think it started with Ryzen, right, with Freedom Fabric, uh, pulling together this, and then you've changed the topology and improved it uh, with with Epic for data center applications. Right. And then here with Xilinx acquisition, uh, they had a lot of uh, HBM. Uh, multi die right. uh, designs as well, so you pull that capability in, and then here on the data center GPU side, an accelerator. Uh, I think you did a really good job with the 300A and the 300M, showing all the different pieces and how they they they, they come together. So, uh, yeah, you took the huge bet. Uh, I think you said a decade ago, and and it has has paid off in spades as you've increased market share with Epic, you've increased market share with with Ryzen. And we'll see about data center GPUs. I want to shift the conversation a little bit uh, to high performance computing. Right. And um, you have won some very major uh, national labs contracts. And these things get one off a piece of paper and a, and a, um, and a belief in the technology. And you were chosen, uh, AMD was chosen, the solution was chosen. Uh, to power these. Can you talk a little bit about these two, uh, uh, I'll call them exascale class right. uh, compute uh, wins? Yeah, so you know, the, the first one is, uh, you know, that we're super proud of is, is Frontier, which you know, took over the number one position on top 500 about a year and a half ago. <laughs> right. And that was MI250 and a third generation Epic derivative uh, part. And, and you're right, we, we really won that deal three, three or four years earlier, right? right? And, and you're, you're you know, working with the labs, you're working with your design partner, in this case, both for Frontier as well as Al Capitan, the other one we'll talk about in a minute, it was yeah. Hewlett Packard Enterprises. Uh, well, actually it was Cray to begin with at That's that right. time, and then Hewlett Packard Enterprises. But you know, you're, you're doing advanced design and the the customer has to bet on the credibility of what you're saying, you know, long before anything exists. Um, but we viewed both projects as as incredibly important projects for for AMD in yeah. terms of our ambitions on HPC, our our ability to you know have flagship design wins to to sort of you know anchor yeah. our roadmap as well as drive us, quite frankly, as well as getting partners, particularly in the HPC realm, getting partners aligned to our software ecosystem to help flesh out the overall solution. So we were super proud of Frontier, you know, um, and, and seeing that, and still number one on the top 500, you know, a year and a half later, it, and uh, the first opportunity, it'll be, it'll be number one for at least two years. Um, we think I haven't the seen that before, but maybe I'm not paying attention long enough. Where something has been there for Summit so long, was was on there as yeah. well uh, for quite some time. But but yeah, that's a little unusual. Um, and we think the next uh, uh, the next big system, certainly from us, uh, is El Capitan, based on MI three hundred A, and that's a, a really cool part because it combines both the CPU and the GPU right. together in one package, uh, which. Uh, you know, the strong feedback from the HPC customers was that really can help speed up their applications. And uh, I think that's really why they entrusted that, that design to us. And, and it's, we're building it now, 
And so I can't wait to see it uh, go live next year. Yeah, I love to see the um, uh, AMD spearheaded an issue called HSA. That's uh, right. Which was sharing. This was, I think, 13 years ago, yep. right? And it yep. was amazing for me, by the way. I wrote a white paper on it. I think it was my second that I did as, as my analyst company. But seeing that uh, come to that, the concept of shared memory yep. uh, coming to fruition is, is pretty cool. And by the way, it's been adopted even by smartphone vendors, too. Right. So, right. anyways, uh, congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, out in Denver at uh, Super Competing this year, the show was all the rage. Yeah. You know, people were kind of. Talking about pre, uh, you know, the 2020 when everything kind of got shut down, that the show had kind of been very limited, a bit narrower researchers, institutions, and this year you couldn't you couldn't get in the door. It was it was jammed wall to wall, and yeah, you know, my joke was flops to tops. This was the year <laughs> that it all. That it well, all yeah, changed. no, it, it it has become it's the de facto. AI hardware conference yeah. as well as supercomputing conference. So it, it's been great to see. The pivot was was palpable <laughs> this year. So, well, as we as we wrap up, uh, for someone that sits in a position like you, that's leading uh, a lot of the charge from a development standpoint, also, oftentimes in front of customers, working closely with this partner ecosystem, you had some really impressive names on stage with you. Where does it go? How fast does it move? I mean. I know the law of diffusion of innovation would suggest that you know that these periods continue to get shorter, but there's not much half life left. You know, like humans, like I, yeah. I, I'm watching the machines, but when like we need more, like our GPUs need to slow down a little bit. I, I tell you, the pace is incredible, and it, it, by the way, it is a challenge. I think for many institutions, you know, you see the 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 pace of AI hardware. I think is picking up to. You'll see annual introductions now of new. Yeah. AI hardware, which is which is akin to the PC industry, yeah. but the machines, the systems that these are going into are fantastically more complex than that, and it's difficult, I think, for many you know, uh, organizations, customers, and partners to absorb that rate of change. Mm -hmm. What I think you'll see is you'll see, you know, many customers will sort of skip a generation. They'll they'll deploy. They'll still deploy every other year. But they'll be out of phase with each other. Overall, um, I think customers are struggling to deal with this rate of innovation. But they're, they're so excited at the promise of what AI uh, can bring to everything and the, the productivity enhancements that we can see. It's an absolute imperative for everybody across the industry to move as fast as they possibly can. Um, and the things that we've seen from the productivity, even internally, we've got about 100 AI projects underway. Internally, and where I mean to say by that, by that I mean to say where AMD is using AI, uh, we're seeing massive, yeah, massive. Things like hiring, things like uh, things HR, like, like sales or like. All of those, yeah. but also on the engineering side yeah. for, for design, for validation, for um, you know, for compatibility, there's all sorts of different oh, applications, right. and we're seeing massive productivity enhancements, which is helping us design faster. So to maintain this this fast rate, um, but it also gives us a lot of confidence that this is not this is not a bubble. This is not a you know flash in the pan. That the productivity enhancements that are being promised out of AI really are coming, and justify increased investment. In IT, so I, I think you know it's going to be an exciting few years for sure. Well, Forrest, thanks so much for sitting down with us today. Well, thank you guys, really appreciate it, and thanks for coming. Thanks. All right, everybody, hit that subscribe button. Join Patrick and myself for all of the episodes here at the AMD Advancing AI event in San Jose, California. Big day, Pat, for AMD. Huge. Big day yeah. for the AI space. We appreciate you all tuning in. We'll see you all soon. <laughs>